ever. Let's make it. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how to make the best, most delicious mole. Let's make it. This is one of my most requested recipes. I've made it before. I had to make it again because it's that good. Mole is a very beloved Mexican recipe. Everyone makes it differently. There's probably a million different types of ways you can make it. This is a simpler way to make it that I personally feel is extremely easy to make from start to finish. People usually find the thought of making mole very, very intimidating because of the long list of ingredients. But I promise you, if you divide out, separate all your ingredients before you start any cooking, it's going to feel like the easiest recipe ever. These are chile de bajillos. Um, this is like one of the main things for mole. But you want to remove the stems and the seeds inside and it's super easy. Chile, like, pull off the stem, throw it out, and then you can like literally just shake out the seeds. You can like cut it open and like come out more easily. But see, do that to all of your chile wajillo. So we're using chile wajillo and chile ancho. To these, you do the same thing. Remove the stem. They kind of look like a large raisin. Remove the stem and then shake out the seeds. These are the chiles de arbol. They're spicy. So if you don't like it spicy, leave them out. But we like it spicy here. So I think that's... Most people serve their mole over boiled chicken. I don't like the thought of eating boiled chicken. So I cook my chicken for my mole slightly differently. I season it with salt and pepper. Then I sear it in my Dutch oven on a medium high heat for about two to three minutes per side. This isn't going to fully cook the chicken. We're just getting a nice sear on it and getting all those chicken juices at the bottom of the pot. Since we're gonna use the same pot to cook the mole. Once all the chicken has been seared, put it on a baking sheet and set it aside for later. To another skillet, add in some lard or cooking oil, and we're gonna toast up and fry all of the ingredients. I do this in batches, and I first start with all of the dry chiles. These toast up and fry up super quick within 30 seconds. If you cook them way too long, they're gonna get charred, black, and very, very bitter. I started with the chile anchos and once they're toasted, I add them into a pot of boiling water. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with all of the dried chile wajillos. These also fry up super quick within 30 seconds. Don't overdo this or else you will have a bitter, bitter mole. My skillet is on a medium heat and you can see that the dry chiles immediately start changing color once you add them to the hot skillet. Once the chile wajillos are toasted, you're going to do the same thing as you did with the chile ancho. Take them out of the skillet and add them to the pot of boiling water. This is going to help the chiles rehydrate so we can easily blend them for the sauce. Once the chiles are fried and in the hot water soaking, we're going to start frying up all of the other ingredients. First with the two corn tortillas. We're going to fry them basically until we have tostadas. This took about two to three minutes per side. Once the tortillas are crispy, drain off any of that excess oil. And then we're going to fry up a polio. This is basically bread for torta. This is optional. You don't have to use it, but I had it. So I wanted to use it before it got moldy. In the original recipe and the first couple times that I've made this, I didn't use the polio, but a lot of people do. So you can use it if you'd like. Fry it until it's golden brown all over. It took about four minutes. Once the bigger ingredients are fried up, like the tortillas and the bolillo, we're going to fry up everything else in one batch. And this is the pumpkin seeds, the peanuts, sesame seeds, onion, garlic, raisins, and the chiles de arbol. 
along with spices like black pepper, cuban seeds, and whole cloves. All of this fries up for about three to four minutes, making sure not to burn any of the seeds. Once all of these ingredients are perfectly toasted up, we're gonna remove them from the heat and place them back on your plate just to stop the toasting process and making sure nothing burns. Lastly, get two Roma tomatoes, add them to the dry skillet and get them nicely charred all over. It takes about three minutes. Now we get to blend everything up. Take the dried rehydrated chilies out of the chili water, add them to your blender and add about one cup of the soaking chili water. Then add all of the other fried up ingredients. You definitely will need to do this in batches. I overfilled my blender, but I still got it to work. It's a Vitamix, so it's very powerful compared to other blenders. This is the point when I should have taken out some of the ingredients to blend this up in two batches, but I kept adding the bolillo and then the tortillas to the blender. There's nothing wrong with living life on the edge. Push everything down as much as possible and then cover it with a lid and start blending it up until you get a smooth sauce. I had to go in there a couple times with my spoon just to help out my blender a little bit because it was overstuffed. Once your mole is blended up, we're going to add some chicken broth to the Dutch oven where we cooked in our chicken. I'm using homemade chicken broth that I had from when I boiled chicken for tamales. You can use store-bought canned chicken broth. About four cups total, then we're gonna add in the blended up mole and mix it in with the chicken broth. To make sure I got all that delicious goodness from my blender, I added some chicken broth to the blender, closed it with a lid and shook it up just to make it easier to pour everything out of it. Pour all of it back into your pot, and then we're going to add in some peanut butter. Trust the process. It is delicious. This is just regular old creamy peanut butter. Then I'm also adding in one disc of Mexican chocolate. This is the brand that I used. Add in the whole disc. It's going to soften up and melt into the sauce. You're going to have to keep mixing this every 20 minutes just to make sure nothing's burning at the bottom. Then we're adding in the sweetness, which is some piloncillo. This is basically Mexican brown sugar. Did, did not try this at home. <laughs> it's gonna melt in there. And that's a it should take the chocolate about 15 minutes to fully dissolve into the mole. Once the chocolate is fully dissolved into the sauce and the piloncillo is fully melted into the sauce, then we can start adding the chicken back into the mole. And this is how we're going to fully cook the chicken since we've only seared it on each side for about two to three minutes for now. This is going to give our mole so much more flavor. All of the chicken juices are going to cook in with the mole. The mole is going to flavor the chicken. And I just think it's better than eating boiled chicken. Make sure you get all the chicken juices from your pan, mix it in, cover it with a lid on medium low heat, and the chicken should be ready and fully cooked through in about 45 minutes. After those 45 minutes, you can taste the mole and adjust for any salt, pepper, or maybe it needs more piloncillo or more chocolate. This is the part where you can really taste it as you go, and if there's something you want more of, add more of that. In total, I let my mole simmer for almost two hours with the chicken in it. At one point, I added a little bit more salt and some more piloncillo because it needed that more sweetness. If you do add any more ingredients to it, let it simmer for at least 20 to 30 minutes after you've added more ingredients to let it all come together. In my family, we usually serve our mole with some traditional Mexican rice. The combination of the mole and the rice I could straight up eat a bowl of just mole sauce and rice, no chicken, it is that good. So we serve up the rice, a couple pieces of chicken, and obviously we need to add more sauce on top of the mole because it's the best part. Be very generous with the sauce, we made a lot of it. And then for final presentation, top it off with some more sesame seeds and enjoy. Please let me know what else you would like to see on here.